Hi, it's Sandy with Estronel Arts, and today I will be swatching out the colors from the Prima Marketing Watercolor Palette, and this one is the Classics. So let me start by showing the palette. Here it is. Uh, this is the first palette that I got from Prima, and I've had it for a while. And so let's um, first talk about the colors. When I got this, it's been not quite a year ago, there were no names that came with the colors and I didn't think to Google it and look it up. I just went and numbered them the way I saw them here on the front. So number one was the whitish one and then the yellow and so on and it sort of looked close to a rainbow for me so I was happy with that um, and that just worked for me so that's how I put them in here. Now I have since um, gotten other watercolor palettes from Prima and I have googled the colors and the names so the numbers that I've used are not uh, necessarily the colors or the colors that I've used don't necessarily go with the numbers that's fine. All right the, um, the way this palette works is it has 12 half pans. It has a little place for mixing your watercolors. They give you a card. Again, if you're going to do this and the colors are not listed on the um, pans when you open them, you might want to Google it and see what's what because I didn't even know they had names when I first got this. This is again one of my first ones. There's a little ring under here. You slip your hand in, slip your finger in there. If you want to take it outside, you want to um, paint a little um, on plein air. All right, let me put this down. I'm going to do a quick spritz, wet my palette. I find that works the best. I'm just using my fine mist sprayer. Let me get that off to the side. And um, I'm going to test these colors on this swatch card that I made. And um, I decided with classics to make fruit and vegetables. And so I tried to pick fruits and vegetables that went along with the colors in the palette. Um, I am going to start with my little set of grapes right here and this little white color that you have right here. And that's called Dove. And I'm going to put that on. And as you can see, it's white and white watercolor is um, not all that useful. It um, All it does is blur my marker lines and um, I'll go back maybe and take a little of that, lift a little of that out or go back over it. If I were painting with that, I would go back over these um, lines of marker when it dries. So that is Dove. Uh, let's go to the next one. So the next one is called Canary and I decided to put that on some lemons. Get a nice big, I'm trying to use a lot of water and make it as pretty light. Uh, this is, hmm, gosh, I don't know, it's like a cad medium yellow. Uh, it's definitely um, brighter than, say, a lemon yellow, but I put it on a lemon anyway because I wanted to. And I'll go back in here and pick up a little bit more pigment and maybe touch this up, a little bit of shadow, and a little too much water there, but I'll go ahead and uh, do the segments. I'm going to do this fairly rapidly. This can be tested out pretty close, quickly. All right, let's clean that out. Get a little bit more water. And um, the next color is called Carrot. And so on the first time I did this, I used an orange, but I thought, well, it's Carrot. Why not use a Carrot? So put a little Carrot in there and I'm going to make it nice and light if I can. And then I'm making the whole thing orange. I'm not going to mess with the green for the tops. And then I'll pick up a little bit more of the pure pigment and maybe give myself a little bit of shadow or lines here. And um, we can take a look at what that'll look like when we're done. All right, and maybe some darker color in the uh, tops of it. All right, that is the carrot. The next is the rouge, and that is this red. And it's, um, it's kind of a pinky red, I would say. Uh, 
I want that a little bit more and get that in there. And again, I'm going to do the whole cherry, including the stem and leaf in the red. This is not mixing, this is just demonstrating. But I want to bring in a little bit darker in the color. So I'm, this pure pigment I'm adding while it's still wet and I'm letting it bleed and bloom and maybe I'll do a little to the leaf too. All right, a little bit on the stems because I feel it needs a little something on the stems and I'll maybe let that bleed in to that a little bit. Alrighty, that's the rouge. Um, somewhat pinkish red, a little bit of, a little tomatoey there. All right, my next color is called candy. And again, I want this super light. And uh, I'm gonna have to come back in a minute because my video just started back up again. I was watching Ghost and Mrs. Muir on Turner Classic Movies, which is a m movie I love and I have seen as often as I can. And um, it was on hold and it just starts up if you let it sit too long. And honestly, the screen saver went on and I forgot I was watching it. <laughs> I was excited to make this. All right, the next one is candy and it's a pink. I made a little dragon fruit. And if you've ever seen those, they are really, really pink. So they have some green in them, but I will not add that. I'll get a little pigment with that. We'll make the little tips pink, even though those are usually the green parts. All right, that's the candy. And my next one is lavender. So one of the things I'm going to do is this clean this little palette so that I have more room to work. And normally when you're doing a painting, you wouldn't use all these colors anyway. You'd probably stick to three or four. So this palette actually is nice for traveling. I think I took this with me when we went to Italy, but I can't remember. To be honest, I, I mean, it hasn't even been a year and I don't remember. All right, that's the lavender. Push that out. My, I'm gonna spritz that blue. And I'm coming down here to the blueberries and the color for this one is called Sailor. So let's, let me find a place that has nothing and let's try a little bit more water and we'll do nice light blueberry. Okay, look at that. Can get a little bit more and I'll do a little pigment in the back there, maybe a little at the tops here, and maybe let this bleed a little bit down towards the bottom. I'm not paying attention to shadows and highlights or anything on these. The object is to just get the colors down as quickly as possible and show you what this palette does and what the colors are like. They're fairly transparent. Um, now, for this one is called Breeze. It is aqua or turquoise, and uh, there are no aqua fruits, I checked. So I'm doing an aqua berry. I just drew what looked like a little blackberry to me. We'll make it an aqua berry and we'll get that in so you can go nice and light or like in the center i'll darken it up i actually have used this a lot for with the sailor for skies and water for beach and seascapes um it's a nice color i like it all right Teeny bit down at the bottom, even though I've already cleaned the brush. Let's put that down there. All right. 
Um, the next one is green apple, and instead of making a green apple, I decided to do a melon. No idea why, but I like this melon. It was kind of cute. Uh, and so we're going to make him nice and light green. I don't even know where his little stem is. That's a little vine. I think I forgot the stem, but that's okay. So for the green apple, um, I'm doing super light there. I'm going to come back and I'll do the little marks on the side, or these, uh, no, rather these little, I don't know what they are, these colors right here, these veins, I don't know what they are. Heck, that's not what they are, but I'm making those green. The, um, this color, the green apple, is not super natural. I think it's like a, they call it like a circus green. You don't really want to use it purely like that in your landscapes and anything that you color that's natural. You might not want to use that. However, it mixes with the yellow really well. The canary, um, I've used it on top of lemon yellow and it works. I've darkened it with the turquoise, I've darkened it with the blue, and mix it with that, and that um, comes out very nicely as well. So it is a nice green for mixing. All right, the next one is roasted coffee. I found kiwis, some brown fruit, so yay on that. I really wanted to try to stick with the colors of the fruits and vegetables when I could. Um, that is darker than I would like, so you know, kiwis are pretty light, so let's, let me get this lighter. Uh, water that down a little bit and make the whole thing. Now it's killing me not to go in here with green and make the top of the kiwi green, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to resist. All right, a little more pigment. Let that kind of go crazy. And as watercolor dries darker, it looks very dark, but it, probably won't end up that way. All right, um, I did uh, for slate. Slate is the gray, and that I did a pumpkin, so let me get that nice and light. This is a nice color. I don't use it that much. Uh, I tend to mix my own grays and with whatever colors I'm using because you can make grays and browns. In fact, the same thing is true with the brown. I don't use the brown very often either. It's I haven't found a need for it because I do mix my own browns and grays uh, with whatever color I'm painting with. So it doesn't get that much use. However, it's not a bad color. It's a little opaque, um, but if I can get this dried and show you, it, it dries nicely. So I'll let a little run down in here and um, let me get a little towards the bottom. All right. Let that go. And I'm not sticking, again, I'm not sticking to any particular way of doing this with shadows and highlights and things like that. I just really want to get the color on. All right. The next one is called Dark Night, and that is their black. And um, it is black. Uh, black would be another one that I tend to mix from my blues and burnt umbers and... and um, whatever colors I'm using in my painting, so I don't use black very often. But I have used this for, I think I was doing a, a dog. It was um, just, I needed more black for the eye. You know, I didn't want it to come out blue. I started with a base of blue, but I wanted to get some darker black in there. And so I did go ahead and use a little of this. And um, it is not too shabby. All right, let me make it a little lighter and get the leaves. Kind of wishing they were green, but they're not. That's a little dark. Let me water that down a little. Or lift a little bit out of there. Okay, get a little, little more. And redraw all this, and here we go. Now, you can see it, it's still wet, so I'm going to, I think I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more yellow to, no, I didn't clean my brush. So let's take that off real fast. When you make a mistake like that, you just come over, Blot that out. Do it quickly. You won't even see it. All right. I'm gonna clean my brush. Get some nice clean water. I just wanted to get a little bit more yellow in there so I could really see if there was a difference. Which I'm not sure I did the best job to show you. All right. I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. And I decided while I'm letting that dry, rather than blow drying it, I'm just gonna 
pull my little sketchbook over here and mix a few colors. Why not? So I have a cherry, a lemon, and a pear. And just real quickly, I'm going to start with my canary base. I want everything to be nice and uh, bright and have a nice yellow base. So I'm, gonna, I'm using a Grumbacher 8 round and I'm just coming in. I'm gonna lay some of the canary in. Uh, this time I'm going to try to do a little with the highlights and the shadows. So I want a nice loose, I'm gonna clean off my palette real fast and then I'm gonna do a nice loose yellow here. Not too dark, I already went a little dark in that. Now with the lemon, probably not a problem to go too dark. So I maybe should have done that first. All right, so I'm laying this in. We're gonna have a little highlight right there. This, I'll have the light source coming from the right down here. All right, and one more for the pear. Give me a little more water to get that the way I want it. So this is just a quick painting to show how well these colors mix and blend. I'm actually going to do a little bit on the stem here and a little on the stem here. All right, so I'm going to begin with the cherry, which is going to be a rainier cherry. So I'm taking a little bit of the rouge and I'm mixing it with some of the canary and then I'm just coming over here and I'm adding a little bit Everything's wet, so I'm doing wet on wet. And I'm going to take some pure pigment and come around here and just let that run into it. I'm gonna show you some of the possibilities. All right. So those Rainier cherries give you a nice mix of colors. They're not all just the red and purple-ish cherries making me miss summer. All right. Next, I have the lemon. And I feel that the lemon is drying out some. So I'm going to take a little bit more of the canary. And as the lemon can have the most yellow in it, I have no problem adding some more. I don't really want to run into the cherry if I can help it. So I'll keep that separate. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of my carrot and mix that on the palette with some of the canary and put that in in some of the different areas. So again, the light source is coming. I took away my highlight, so I'm just gonna go back here and maybe take a little bit out. And I'm going to let the carrot add a little bit of color and dimension to that lemon. I'll come around here, get the basic shape. I just sketched out these little shapes. Once you do it once or twice, it's not that hard. All right, All right. a little bit more orange, just to give it some life. And then I'm going to take a tiny bit of the green apple. I'd like to mix it, and you can see by my palette, if you can see my palette, um, let me move that down a little bit. My, oh, you can't even see it. Well, hmm. I can't fix that now. Okay, I'm gonna uh, mix it with a little bit of the canary. And I'm just gonna add a, just a touch of green in here because a perfectly yellow lemon, while you buy it at the store, is not that interesting if it's all just one color. All right, and my last one is the pear. And the pear is gonna be green and since I had got green all over my canary palette. I'm going to um, just dive in there and get that color. I want to re-wet this, keep, try to keep a little bit of my highlight. Um, come and get some of my green apple and begin to add that to the canary. And let's get some green going in here. A little bit more mixed with a little canary. I have a tendency to just take my brush and go right into my other colors. That is um, maybe a drawback with using this kind of palette. 
for people like me who don't take the time to clean your brush in between. Sometimes I do, but for a demonstration like this, I'll just go back and clean it later. She says, <laughs> we'll see. All right, I got a little bit of pear color in there, a little bit of the lemon, the cherry. I tried to get my highlights in. Let me see if I can do a decent shadow, and then we'll go back and look at the palette colors and just check those out, or the swatches I've already done. So let's see, this is kind of vibrant color. I might take a little bit of my aqua and a little bit of the blue and a tiny bit of the red. I'm hoping my hair is not getting in the way as it usually does. And I make myself just a little bit of a purple. And we just put a little bit of shadow under here. It's not going to be perfect. I just want to get the idea across. All right, now I meant for this palette to be visible through this. I'm not going to redo this. This is the second time I've done this. However, this dragonfly I posted for World Water Color Group. I don't remember what the prompt was. It might have literally been dragonfly, but I don't think so. Um, I think it was free and easy or something. But I used the classics to do this little painting that day too. So it um, these colors are bright and vibrant um, but they mix well and you can do a lot with them so here's this little painting we put that off to the side for a second and see if we can get that uh, swatch card back let's take a look okay so the only one that's really still wet is the um, lemon because I went back and put a little extra in there but you can see the dove hmm, whites usually a generally a waste you probably want either a white gel pen or gouache if you want white in your watercolor or mask off your whites. Canary is nice. Carrot, I love. I'm a big fan of orange. Uh, the Rouge. Candy. Lavender. Could use some more in there. I love the blueberry. This is a very nice blue and I've used it a lot. It works um, well with a lot of things. And um, you saw me mix the green apple. The breeze I used in the uh, shadow. Again, the brown and the gray and the black, I don't use that often. The black, when you do it lightly, makes a really nice gray though. A uh, little opaque for my taste, but I have used them. And um, especially when you're out paint, uh, when you're painting plain air, you just are traveling. I've used this on a plane and I could um, get what I needed without uh, such a big mixing tray to get the point across. All right, let, let me just take this last little painting back and just kind of move it around. It's not dry, but you get the point. I'll let that run a little. I didn't really do the stems. I'll do the stems real fast just to close it off. And I'm going to use the brown because even though I said that I don't use it too much, I just want to be able to end this and not keep you guys too long. I appreciate you watching and bearing with me. I am still learning how to do YouTube, do, you know, film things and um, try to get some content on here. But if you liked what you see, maybe give me a thumbs up and um, I'll be reviewing a couple more of these palettes. So thank you for watching and subscribe.